Welcome to Pure Fuckery, the podcast. I am your host. It's your favorite Dr. Bay, Monique Ross. In today's episode, I am joined by a special guest co-host. I got my homegirl, the beautiful Miss Shay Monet in the building. Hi. What is this hi? Is that, that's like a, <laughs> what was that? Oh, is that I your signature think... way? No. Just... What's it called? I know it has a name. It don't. <laughs> No, I just be doing it to people. I it's don't know. cute. I love it. I love it. That should be your signature when you on a runway. Huh. Like, at the end, <laughs> do that. It, it sets you apart from everybody else. I love it. What y'all think? Let us know in the comments, man. Like, get off the runway. <laughs> no, they won't. No, they won't. So I got my homegirl, Shay Monet, in the fucking building. I brought her on because we had such an overwhelming response from the episode, Don't Tell Her She's Pretty for a Dark Skinned Girl with my homegirl, PK. And the conversation with PK was dope as fuck. Uh, I really was trying to center it around her brand, but that's a topic that came up and I wanted to discuss. But Shay Monet, she saw the episode and she's like, I want to be, you know, I want to be on, be a part of it. And I'm, we'll do a part two because we had such a, uh, so much feedback uh, people in the comments, uh, people in my DMs telling me that it's definitely a topic that they're glad that I highlighted and um, ran into Sh uh, Shay here. And she's such a beautiful girl, supermodel. She's on our way, y'all. We we speak, we manifest shit here. Yes. We speak it into existence. So uh, we brought Shay Monet back and she, she feels a way because as a dark skinned woman, she can absolutely relate to me saying, don't tell her she's pretty for a dark-skinned girl. So to kick it off, Shay, you're beautiful, dark-skinned girl, you know, um, and she's not just beautiful for a dark-skinned girl. She's a beautiful woman. So when you hear that phrase, how do you how do you react to it? And do you, first and foremost, do you have you heard that phrase growing up and up until now? Do you hear that often? Do people constantly tell you you're pretty, you know, for a dark-skinned girl? I've heard that so much growing up. Like, I didn't even trip off of it. Like, right. initially, I didn't think that it was a thing because um, when somebody, when when most of the world, you look at it and it's not a, it's not a thing at the time. Like, when we were younger, it's not a thing to be a pretty dark-skinned girl. So, like, they always highlight that. And I just, I didn't feel a way about it, but when I started getting older and people were saying that, like, um, it was a guy I had a crush on, and he was just like, man, you know, he was like, you'd be so far if you was light-skinned. I was just oh, like. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> like, like, straight blue. Like, I was just like, and I hadn't really tripped off of, like, I hadn't paid attention to my complexion until other people started bringing it right, up. Like, right. I just never did. It just was not a thing. I was a black girl in a predominantly white school. I went to Catholic school. I went to a Christian school. I was in private school. So I, I was, it wasn't even like other black girls to really compare to. So right. I was the only black girl. So that wasn't something I was hearing until I went to the public school district and like the other black kids was just reminding me how black I was. And I was like, you know what? Dang, I am a little darker than y'all. But it was nothing I never tripped off of. And then right. people start saying stuff like, like, nah, because you'll look at them, and I'll be like, pretty for dark skin. And I'm like, okay, that, so the, what, it's, you're supposed to be cute when you light skin? Because if that's the case, I'm looking at some people, and I'm like, you ain't hitting the cut either. So what's, <laughs> true, what's going on? True, true, <laughs> true that, true that. I have the complete opposite experience growing up. Like, I grew up, you know, in a predominantly first, early childhood years, it was, you know, predominantly black schools, and more so mixed races and then I ended up in a predominantly white school but in my household friends family my mom's girlfriends all of them they just always reference my dark skin you know like even my mom like my mom and my dad they would call me pretty black always and it was more so a term of endearment and it was more so in you know lovingly but it was it's just something that stuck with me always and even my siblings would constantly you know I'm the darkest one out of all of us my sister's just as dark my youngest sister is 
I think it's more so our middle sister. She's lighter than all of us. Our brother, he's dark, but not as dark. But the middle sister's lighter than all of us. But they constantly, you know, call me names like Blackie and, you know, shit like that. And even in school, you know, get picked on for being. And I was tall, real skinny, and just, you know, like olive oil. Like, for real. For real. Like, it's real life, like the black olive oil from uh, Popeye. I don't know why that popped up in my head, but yeah, like it was something that was always acknowledged and for as long as I can remember. And as an adult now, when people say it, like I respond, whereas before I just be like, thanks. Like I tell men all the time when they reference my skin tone, like referencing me like, Hey chocolate, good morning, chocolate or stuff like that. And I'll be like, I, it's just a kind of like stop. Like I have a name. Like why is why is it? It doesn't bother you. Not. I mean, anything coming from somebody I don't like is gonna bother <laughs> me. Like any type of pet name, if I don't like, True. it's gonna bother me. Um, but like that. Uh, I don't. Not for real. I I, I guess it's. Just, I don't know. I think over the years it's just become something that annoys me now. And I absolutely tell men, and probably ran a few of them off by telling them, like, hey, I don't, like, reference me as my name. Like, Monique's fine, or Mo, you okay. know. I'm, I think I'm cool with chocolate. Like, I, I know people that would be like, uh, what's up, black? Like, my ex used to call me that, and I didn't even, like, trip off of it. Because, mm-hmm. like, like, we was <laughs> actually, like, the same color. So it didn't, it didn't bother me as much, but, like, um... I had a homeboy that used to be like, oh, so blacky. And I was just like, can you stop calling me that? Like, that that annoyed me. Right, right. Like, can you stop calling me that? He'd be like, oh, no, it's all good. Like, nah, bro, it's, it's not. not. I don't like, like it. Like, you getting on my nerves. Like, yeah. don't do that. And I had to, I think the way I started dealing with that is I started saying things to people that they wouldn't accept to let them know that this is what you're doing and this is what I don't like and you only understand it when it happened to you. Yeah. So, like, you know, people, there was plenty of things. I was skinny. I was the... the Thinnest person around. I was one of the tallest in the class, even like taller than the boys. I was the darkest. Um, those type of things were normal to me. But then, like, I don't know. What about with siblings? Do you have siblings? I, I do have siblings, um, but I'm like the second oldest. Okay. But uh, we didn't grow up together. Okay. I, I got step siblings too. Like my mother got married, and then I had like step brothers and sisters, and they they're all like light skin, like right. yellow. Did they? Like did they? Oh man, fuck my with you all step brother used to always get on me. Like I hated him. <laughs> I hated him, and he's light skinned with hazel eyes, okay. and like the pretty boy. Like all the girls was just always coming around the house and looking for him and stuff. I hated him. <laughs> she and then, say I hated man, him. Real, you don't hate him now. He, like, he used to pick on me. Like, <laughs> and then his other brother had started coming around a little later, and his he started like trying to mess with me because his brother was. And I was just like, bro, I'm bigger than you, though. Like, that's how I was feeling. Like, I'm taller than you, and you're trying to be hard, and you not, and it's making me so mad. Like, <laughs> I couldn't stand them. Like, when we got older, stuff kind of leveled out. Mm-hmm. Um, my stepsister, she was always cool. She ain't never tricked me like nothing. She was just, I'm going to go, you know. She went and did teenage girl stuff, but I hated them. Like, I'm talking about from playing outside to when they cousins came over, and then they start picking on me, but when everybody was gone, it would be like, cool, I, I hated him. So he would say stuff to me, and I'd just be like, why you, like, the day he decided to be nice type stuff, I, why are you even talking to me? Like, I don't want to talk to you. Don't talk to me. Right. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Like, my siblings, they were cruel. And it was behind closed doors. It was never in public, though. It was never out in front of other people. They were not cruel to me. And, like, even at school, when people were mean at school, like, my brother was my protector. He would take up for me. And not too many people fuck with me like that because because of my brother. But at home, oh, yeah, man, they had all the jokes, man. They, like, flamed the fuck out of me on a regular basis. Cause I, all because my skin darker than theirs. And I was just like, I never understood it. Because when I look at people, I'm not tripping off of light skin, dark skin, you know, things like that. I have eyes I can see, but I've never referenced another person like, Hey, light skin, or you know, it's, stuff it's, I people mean, do. It's weird though. Like, 
like that's what I said when I had to start responding to people. They be like, oh, you, you know, dudes that even say weird stuff like you the first dark skinned girl I talked to, and I'd be like, and you, it just make you say, I'd be like, you the first dude I talked to that I didn't like. <laughs> and they, you know, like I didn't think was cute, and they'd be looking at you. Or I'd be like, "You the first dude I talked to that was short," and they'd be looking at you. It's like, yeah, you don't like it. Stop doing yes, it. Like, yes, stop doing it. Stop doing it, man. <laughs> we, it's it's an issue. You keep and pointing it out. I'm I'm thirty. Like, bro, I know. <laughs> and it's I don't know. It's super weird. But stuff like that to me, it wouldn't. My mama didn't raise me to pay attention to like my looks, like at all. Right. My mom never was like, oh, my beautiful chocolate baby. She was never saying that to me. I know she was saying it to other people, but my mama never said that to me. Right. So I never tripped off of it. I never thought like, oh, I was a beautiful chocolate girl. I never thought I was an ugly chocolate girl. I just was functioning. I was just here. Like, right. I ain't trip off of it. Right, right. Was- and that's the thing. We don't sit up and trip <laughs> off of it like... Other people trip off mm-hmm. of it. And then, like, it makes it f- seem like we're tripping off of it because we're sitting here recording this episode. We're just having a conversation. Y'all have to understand that, man. But, um, yeah, we're not sitting up stressing about it. <laughs> this is the skin that I'm in. This is who I am. Like, this is who I was created to be. And we, I'm accepting of it. Why does the rest of the world have to constantly acknowledge it and act like they're doing it? a favor or sending a compliment my way by saying you're pretty for a dark skin girl. Why come I just can't be fucking pretty? Like start telling them stuff too. You, you pretty to be fat. (laughs) Cause 'cause, I would never say anything. That's what I'm saying. Like that. that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say that. And it's just like, or not even fat. Like you're pretty to be a big girl. Like nobody wants to hear I'm pretty to do this. Even, even if like you are the exception for, the stereotype that they're used to. But, like, stop trying to box me in for something. Like, right. By saying that, by adding that little in, innuendo on the end, it's, it implies that you're surprised because dark skin is not considered pretty. And that's that's the point. That's, what, that's the point we're trying to make. The lighter the skin, like you said, you know, people tend to think the lighter the skin, the fairer the skin, the prettier the person. That's not always the case because I've seen unattractive people who are of all different skin tones and colors and races or whatever you want to call it. And bottom line is fucking offensive. <laughs> Personally. That's why I started like, that's why I started my brand. Like, dark okay, skin let's shape. talk about your brand. Let's talk about your brand. <laughs> like I started it because it was something that I wanted to see. So dark skin shade is my brand. Okay. Um, it's up under Shea Monet, but Dark Skin Shea is my brand, and I was tired of not seeing um, or people acting as if we were just, the, you know, the exception. Like, people always be like, oh, Shea, you're, you're cute to be chocolate, or, you know, I don't be knowing, I don't be seeing a whole bunch of chocolate girls. Or when I was, like, um, getting into modeling and acting, the only chocolate people I was seeing was um, women that were usually just only African and um, not African-American, you know, just African. African. Okay. And I, I'm like, okay, well, there are dark-skinned women in all cultures. You have dark Indians, you have dark Dominicans, like you have dark Latinas. Like, it's a whole bunch of them. And across the board, everybody is still treated less than. Right. Like, that's something that went back from slavery. And people don't realize that they treat a lot of things, like the narrative on, on dark or black anything is – it got a negative connotation attached yes, to it. I agree. I like agree. Black smoke. cats. Yeah, like anything. <laughs> everything is always like. Black cats are bad luck. Walking to the light. Like, what? Like, no, nah, I'm cool. It's being in the dark is, I'm cool. I'm chilling. So I created this brand because the depictions of dark skinned people that I was seeing was not what I wanted to see. Like, my standard of beauty is not, it shouldn't be based off of things that I would never be. Because if you aiming for that, then you're going to already fail. You right. can never be this. So you have to, you know, and, and when you, I believe representation, it really does matter. When yes. you see something, you realize that it can be done or it is true. So with my brand, I wanted to create um, art, you know, like art and um, visuals for people to be able to see so that it can be so common to them that they can stop trying to make it seem like there's an exception. It's not only like 12 
dark skinned people in the world. And people, every time they see you, that's that's how they treat you. Right. I got a whole family of dark skinned people. Yeah. Everybody. We're all dark skinned. And every time they see you, they treat you like that. But like I feel like it helps with the confidence of younger women that aren't used to seeing that. Or when yes. we do see darker people in movies and stuff like that. Like we don't often be love interest. We don't often be the girl next door that's beautiful as if I don't live next door to you. Like right. I'm I'm right. We're human. So I created a brand to where I could cultivate those ideas and put it on something. I start, I'm starting with enamel pens. I have enamel pens. And okay. I got one on today. Okay. It's my That's chocolate pretty. goddess. I love um, it. And I was in a video for a local artist named Strings, but I was in a video and this was what I looked like in the video. Okay. I was a chocolate angel. So when I seen that, I was just like, dang, I want to be able to make things like that showcase dark skin and luxury like lavish living and beauty mm -hmm. and all of those so that I could have my own standard so that I could you know even like with my hair like my natural hair like I don't have curly hair it's kinky coily right and a lot of black women do and those type of things when you're not show when you're not when someone doesn't show you that in a a way that seems admirable Right. Admirable. Shit. Right. Yes. In a positive <laughs> um, light. <laughs> it doesn't, you don't think that that's something that you can achieve. Like, there's other beautiful women in the world, and people are trying to treat, like, it'd be crazy for me to try to go out there and, like, do Kim Kardashian. Like, that's not nothing I'm going to ever look like. Right. You know, and it's not that you should be aiming to be anybody else, but it's it kind of uplifts you when you see other people that look like you're doing something so the creations i wanted to have i wanted them to be us just dark skin like in yes. education you know in stem fields places where you're not used to seeing so that you can be motivated and say like look that look like me yes or i want to be an artist i want to do that i'm gonna go do that because i see somebody that look like me in their room. yes exactly exactly everybody don't want to be a trailblazer yeah i agree some people just like, you know what, I just I, I just want to, I just need some motivation. And so with my brand, I'm going to start encompassing, like, all of that. Like, when it comes to beauty products, when it comes to just things that you could see that, that look like you. It's just like the name plates. If, if you have a name that's not, like, traditional, like Amanda or Sam or something like that, and you go somewhere and try to get the keychains or name plate, your name's not on there. Right. And then you'd be like, dang, I don't, I don't feel special. Right. I ain't supposed to be here, but for chocolate people, like, it's too many of us. Stop treating us like anomalies. Like, that's right. how I felt. So I decided to create something of my own, and it it made me feel good about it. And hopefully anybody else in those positions, because, I mean, it yeah, it's about it. It's primarily it's dark-skinned people, but all black women understand how it feels to possibly be in a room and you don't feel like somebody appreciates you just for you or right. you, they keep making exceptions for you. And it's like, no, nah, I'm qualified to be here. Yeah. You can't, you don't have to make I no exception for me. Absolutely <laughs> agree with that. I've been in, in positions as far as career is concerned. Right. Dr. Bay. Yes. <laughs> your <course>. favorite <laughs> fucking Dr. Bay. Don't get it twisted. It's not always fuckery over here. Shout out to my man, Big Stu. We are recording in the fucking Big Stu Studios. I'm here with my homegirl, Shay Monet, and we talking. Don't tell her she's pretty for a dark-skinned girl. And, yes, I am your favorite Dr. Bay. But, <laughs> no, in um, real fucking world, my career and shit, I've been in rooms, and I've had people tell me I'm only there for... Fucking, whatever reason, whatever the token, it basically represent my, you know, uh, I can't think of the ex exact word I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, thinking of. It'll come back to me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm high. <laughs> I'm always high. <laughs> Y'all know that. <laughs> I'm always high. But basically, like because of diversity reasons, right? Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had people that didn't even know the correct term. It'll come to me eventually. But uh, where they would just basically say, oh, you're here for fucking, you know, just you're a seat filler. They say that to you? Yeah. I've, like, I've had people, subordinates under me, like when I fired them or some shit like that, just try to hit below the belt, like come at me and say some shit like, um, you know, whatever. But they don't understand that, hey, I've, 
you don't know my resume. <laughs> I'm here for a fucking reason. Trust me. <laughs> I'm not here just because. I'm not here to be a seat filler. I'm qualified. I'm capable. I'm more than capable of, you know, performing these responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's just it's something in life that I've I'm I'm not going to say I've learned to live with because I I like I'm bold enough now to where I address it mm -hmm. and I speak up for myself. You know, I don't try to disappear or make myself unseen. And although I do wear black all the time and my therapist, Helen, she told me <laughs> that I try to wear black. She said, I wear black every day because in my mind, it makes me like I conform to the room. Like I fit into the room. She said, you need to understand that whether you wear black or hot pink, wherever you go, you just have a presence about you wherever, whatever room you're in, your presence is going to be felt. And mm -hmm. she said, "It you can wear whatever the fuck you want to wear. She said, it's that heart that she called, I, I call it, so she calls it now, that black piece of coal in my chest <laughs> <laughs> that one would call a heart. She said, oh, it's lit. It's, it's, no, it's, it's hilarious. It's comedy because I've been with her for a while now. But uh, she said, People can feel that. She said, I don't give a fuck. You can call it a black coal, hunk of coal, but the energy is, your presence is felt because of your energy. And I get that. I absolutely get that. And I wear black for my own reasons. It's slimming. Um, it's easy. Every morning when I get up, if I have something to do, I know I'm probably going to put on a pair of black jeans and a black t-shirt. <laughs> like, what shoes I'm going to wear, I don't know. But I know that about myself, and it makes it easy. Everything in the work match. world, <laughs> yes, in the work world, um, I know I'm going to put, if I physically have to go into a job, I know I'm putting on some black slacks, some black pumps, a cami, a different color cami, pink, purple, orange, whatever color cami I choose to put on that day, and a black blazer. I know that about myself, and I'm that's, okay with that. That's like, your profile yes, this, I, always, <laughs> every like, if you know me, you know I'm speaking facts right now. Like every day, it's gonna be in the summertime. It's black leggings or some <laughs> black biking shorts, or if I'm going out, it's a black dress. You know, it's like it's easy. You're my class, my closet is. <laughs> I have my black t-shirts, black sweaters, black sh jeans, jackets, shirts, dresses. It's you if you know me, you know I'm not bullshit. Pause for a second. So, just this was random, but okay. When you were younger, did you have an issue wearing black? Cuz we finna talk about some colors now. I didn't have an issue wearing black. I wore whatever I wore. Like it was like I I wasn't all black thing. I didn't do this this all black thing came about after my mom passed. Okay. And Jay-Z, y'all know, like, my relationship with Jay-Z. <laughs> y'all know the, the relationship that I have with Hove. Mm -hmm. And one of his albums, he says, I think I might wear black four years straight. My president is black. Okay. And that was around the time, I want to say. Maybe not. Maybe a few years, a year or two off or so. I don't know. But after my mom passed, I kind of went into this black thing. Okay. And it wasn't like, like... I would tell people I'm in mourning and I still people, if anybody asks me like, why do you always wear black? I tell them I'm in mourning and they'll be like, Oh, I'm sorry. And like, I, I think it's funny. So I laugh to myself cause I'm not like my mom's been gone 13 years. Am I still mourning the loss of my mom? Yes. Like I, in my heart, like I feel that void, but I'm not sitting up crying. Like, Oh my God. Like I understand we live to die. Mm -hmm. And she was just one of those people. She died young. You know, she was too good. She was too good for this fucking world that we live in. And I like, that's how I look at the situation. I'm not your typical person who's sitting up. I don't cry often. And when I do, it's not for reasons that other people cry. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I jokingly say to my therapist that lump of coal in my chest. I'm not going to say I don't have feelings. We all have feelings. I would be lying. But like... I'm just not your emotional creature. I'm not that caring person. Like, if you know me. We super opposite. My friends, the, the, the people in my circle, friends and family, they know not to pick up the phone and call me on no sad, crying, emotional shit. 
my reaction is not going to be normal. What? Like I'm, I'm, I'm that not. Person. I'll be like, Are you okay? See, yeah, like, and I try to be, and when I try to be, <laughs> when I'm trying to be that person, it's the awkwardest shit ever. And it's and in my head, I'm laughing. Like, you know, I could be consoling you, but in my head, I'm thinking of something funny because I guess because I don't deal well, and I'm not gonna say I don't deal well because I've been in a lot of situations where. I've had to be the rock for the people around me. And perhaps that's something my mom instilled in me because I just recall her always telling me, you have to be strong for them. Um, you're the strong one. You're the strong one. I'm the oldest girl of four. My brother's the oldest, but he's a punk pussy. No, I'm joking. I love my brother. We're in a good, positive space now. I love my broski. I'm trying to get him on a podcast, man. I'm trying to get on a podcast soon. But no, um, yeah, I, I'm just not the, I'm not a sensitive person woman oh, and people so people equate that to my zodiac i'm a sagittarius and oh, my she said is oh is your mom how's your mom is she emotional no it, but here's the thing here's the thing let <laughs> she, me tell y'all something no i'm i'm a, i think she she i think she is well no I, no i don't think she is I publicly don't. we are not we wear this tough ass exterior publicly, my privately. I'm a punk pussy. <laughs> so I swear, I'm so sensitive and emotional privately. Like I watch movies and cry. No, like the dog could die in the my movie and I'll cry. Crying about nothing. It's, that's and, the thing. I rarely cry. And like, like I mean, she's she will. No, she her eyes are always watering up, but she's super stern. But my mm -hmm. granny the same way. And I'm completely opposite from them. What's like, your zodiac? I'm a cancer. You're a cancer. Y'all emotional creatures, I, man. I am emotional. Uh huh. Very. I, I'm not sensitive though. Okay. So, but if I feel it, I feel it deeply. Yes. So that's something I had to recognize in myself. And like, uh, I don't know. Do you feel? Do you feel shit? I, do you feel everything deeply? I feel. I mean, I feel like I do, but some things can make me turn it completely off. Okay. And yeah. I haven't heard or read up on anything that says that empaths can actually do that. So that's why I wouldn't feel that. Okay. But okay. um but I mean, I don't know. Whatever. I don't I asked you, I was only asking you about wearing <laughs> the all black though. Um more so because like when I was younger, mm -hmm. I wouldn't wear black because I didn't want people to talk about me saying like, Oh, you blend into your shirt. Like people used to be joining. So I couldn't join. And I got that a lot. I did. Like when I wore black as a kid. I never wore black. People would mess with me and be nope. like, Where's Monique? Mm -mm, like, I never wore it. They couldn't see me like, you know, but but I also didn't wear bright colors. I was afraid to wear. I was afraid to wear black. I was afraid to wear bright colors. And I do remember the color that I wore the most was like white, baby blue. I would never wear a brown shirt. I just didn't I hated blue. brown. I never yeah, wore brown. Black. And look at you with this brown <laughs> shirt on, looking good in this brown shirt. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it. But it, it just, I don't know. It came with when I realized like. No matter what people were saying about me, it was just like, and I look at stuff, I'd be like, but I look better than you. But I'm smart. My grade's better I'm than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm, I'm more athletic yes. than you. Like, I'm built better than you. Like, I can outrun you. I could out spike you on any, like, on these sports. Like, I can outdo you. And then I realized, like, y'all got me tripping off of something that ain't even nothing. I look better than you. Yeah. Like, and then that's just how I was feeling. Like, right. I was afraid to voice that because I didn't like I didn't like being combative. Right. Unfortunately, now I, I think I am. Like I think I will go. I, I'll go back. Yeah, go talk to yeah. anybody. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't like that, and I didn't feel like I. I probably wouldn't like. I wasn't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. Like I'm. I'm. I'm sweet. Like I'm. I'm a sweet person. Like I'm not a mean girl at all. Like right. I can't do that. But I can get there. But I don't even like seeing that part of me. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm not a mean girl. I'm, and don't look when I say I'm not emotional. It doesn't mean I'm a mean girl because I'm not a mean girl. Like my the people that know me, that love me, I'm there. I'm like, call me when you need somebody to put some fire up under your ass and motivate you and inspire you and encourage you and uplift you. Yes, I'm that friend. I just don't do well when it comes to emotions and sensitive shit and crying. Like you know, I'm gonna be there. And I'm going to rub your back awkwardly and support you and love you and encourage you. But, you know, don't call me because <laughs> the nigga beating your ass. Call me when you're ready to kill him. Oh, whoa. 
and we go like that's that's the friend that I am. Like I'm because if you call me and he beat your ass, be like bitch, leave. Or why the fuck is you calling me for he beat your ass last month? Why like that's so the friend. Much? I don't know how we ended up here, but that's me. That's that's the friend that I am. When you ready to kill him, call me. You want to bury the body? Call me. Don't call me when he beat your ass and you're torn between are you staying or are you leaving. Bitch, leave. Beat his ass back. Stab him. Shoot him. Why are you letting him put his hands on you? Oh, God. Y'all, y'all I've, I've expressed this. I grew up in an abusive household. My father was abusive to my mother. So, yeah, understand my anger and my rage and my energy. Like, why are you putting up with this bullshit? Leave. Or let's kill him. But if you want me to cry with you, I'm not because, bitch, you being stupid. But this ain't what we talking about. We are here talking about. <laughs> don't tell her dancing, she's y'all. pretty for a dark skin dancing. girl. With my homegirl, Shay Monet. We live in fucking Big Stu Studios, man. Y'all know I get on my, I have my moments. I have my moments. I just said it's okay. I was just like, I don't, <laughs> I don't like, know where well, we went. What? what? what is, <laughs> did I scare you? I don't mean to scare you. Don't be afraid. I'm loving and caring and gentle. <laughs> Ask the fellas. Oh. I'm very loving and caring and gentle. Speaking of fellas, I just have to unpack this oh, real God. quick. Here we go. We're going to oh, get back God. on topic. <laughs> Sue, come in here for this. Sue, where is Big Sue at? We need Big Sue in the building. We need more drink. Here, you need some more drink. Let me tell y'all something, how the universe works. We're going to get back on topic, but let's go with, let's talk about how the universe works, man. No, we could talk about chocolate and dating when you're done. We we go we talk about we gonna talk about it all. The other day, Thursday, a friend of mine reached out. I was like, "What are you doing later on this evening? I'm going to be drinking at this spot." I said, "I'll let you know." Cause y'all know I don't be trying to be going. I don't try to go out. Like, don't call me to drink because it's so tempting. So I ended up wrestling with the idea back and forth. Like he texts me at one. The the drinking was starting at seven. Seven o'clock rolls around. I get up, I shower, and some just kept nudging me, go, go, go. And, like, somewhere in my mind, something was like, something said, like, you just never know. Mm -hmm. I go down to this bar. It's 444 while I'm telling this story, y'all. And I run into this guy that I, I wouldn't say we dated. I wouldn't say we didn't date. But for three years, we were in an entanglement. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we were entangled and y'all know recently i announced i'm single single like i am i'm single single i men old man we are completely done haven't talked to him seen him nothing and i'm going to keep it like that and i ran into this young man and i call him a young man because he's young when i saw him i text him i'm like what are you 25 now and y'all know i'm 40 right <laughs> So I don't know how old we were. Like, I'm sure I was, like, somewhere between 33, 35, somewhere around there, right? And we're not going to talk about how old he was. We're not going to. But I ran into this young man. How old are you? 30. 30. See, don't judge me, right? (laughs) I feel like my, I got to pull up. So, yeah. So I ran into this young man. And, you know, we, we end up talking, like, Hole in the wild bar, just out the blue, random Thursday evening. And we end up talking, getting reacquainted, ex- you know, numbers exchanged and all this shit. We didn't end on bad terms, but we didn't end on good terms. And I'm in the space where I firmly believe that everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, is this a lesson, a blessing, or a test? I don't know how we ended up here, y'all. And I know this is not relationship therapy, but I don't know what to do with this situation. Let me, I guess my question to the fuckers, me at 40, Shay, you at 30, what should be my cutoff? <laughs> I ain't going to tell y'all how old this young man is. Just know that we, we, we dealt with each other for three fucking years. He's not 30, though. <laughs> What is the cutoff? What is the? What, I mean, which, it depends on what you're trying to do with them. Realistically, like if if you know you just out here to play, then I'm done playing. Don't you, look, Mo. Sure? I'm done. I'm done. Would, would you take him playing? Serious? And that's the thing. He's like you. I wouldn't take him seriously the last time because he tried. 
he actually like he was trying and that's what he said to me when I ran into him he was because he was like we were great together and I was like sir great great between look I said sir we had amazing sex and I told several people no bullshit this young man definitely top two and y'all know I've had some sex I've had some amazing sex look at God Look at God. I'm t- look, I'm, I'm, look, sex with me so amazing. Still care. Sex with me. We're, play that Rihanna. We going to close out to that Rihanna. I'm telling y'all, and I've had some amazing sex, but with this young man, top two experiences. Mm. Top, definitely top two. And I'm 40 years old. I want to tell y'all how, how old he is, but... My fear is that you're going to judge me and it's none of your fucking business. But I guess the question is, drop it in the comments, y'all. How young is too young for a young mo? <laughs> I don't think you can really answer that for real. Like, because can't nobody tell you what you want? Can't nobody tell you what you're looking for somebody? And what you're looking for, somebody might not come in the age range that you may think is And that acceptable. is true, because I've dated, like, the old man. He's the old man. And that the level of toxicity of that whole situation, man, thank God it's over. And with this young man, it, was, it wasn't toxic. But from my perspective, we had amazing sex. He ain't finished, though. Who? The, the dude. The old man or the young no, man? No, the young man. He's not, whatever young men need to get out, he ain't finished with it, though. So, like, you got to understand, he's a, he's how would you a feel old if, soul and he? How would you feel if a young man played you? Versus, a, I mean, granted, nobody wants to I play shit, you, young man, young men have played me. <laughs> have oh. broken. A young man is the reason <laughs> this heart is is a lump of coal now. <laughs> let's, if we go talk about it, let's talk about it. <laughs> it is because of a young man. We're not going to go off into that. Like, that that experience, that situation, he's definitely my after, the, my young ex. He, if... Fellas, if you've ever crossed paths with your favorite Dr. Bay and you I need a paper towel. ever, Sue, will you get us a paper towel, please? I, I caught off guard with some bullshit. <laughs> the fuckery is on an all-time high right now. The young man, he's definitely the after. Fellas, if you ever want to find the person to blame mm. for this, all of this, all that you've ever endured. First and foremost, gentlemen, I would like to apologize for any toxicity that I brought into your life. And I would also like to apologize. The rest of the chocolate girls ain't like that. For any behavior <laughs> that wasn't positive. But if you ever want to find the person who created this monster, hit my DMs. I'll give you his name and phone number. <laughs> I'm talking shit, man. Shout out to my young ex, man. Uh, shout out to him. Shout out to him, man. We we don't say names around here, but he it. knows who he is, and everybody watching know who he is. Like, shout out to him. Like, uh, that's like he's that's my that's my dude, but that's my guy. Like, he's definitely the actor. He's the actor that created the shit that you see right here, right now. Maybe not all of it, everything after him combined, but he definitely, he put me on the path. <laughs> but look how dope monster. you are. Dope as fuck, look man. Dope, dope as fuck, y'all. If you Shout don't know, yoke, if you have man. never had the full Monique experience, <laughs> you don't know. But no, not minus that. I'm talking just overall. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, the, we, we the uh, recognition, circle. man. I appreciate the recognition. But anyhow, tell me how old, how young is too young? That's my question. How young is too young? I'm not going to tell y'all how old this young man is. But we hung out. He took me on trips. Um, not trips, but like we went fishing 
and hung out and I met his parents, like went to his 25th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> like, you look, okay. I did, Too dressed young. up and everything. Too this young. was years ago. This was, this was several years ago before I was 40. He's still the same age difference <laughs> Between who he I was have a twenty, I have a twenty-one year old, y'all. I have a twenty-one year old son. Y'all know this, Ooh. yeah, man. And yeah. Your son too young for me to talk to. Do, do, leave my baby alone. <laughs> I was saying. sitting here wondering how old. That's why I asked how old you were because I, I would definitely like introduce you to my son. But you're you're thirty, and that would be the same situation as me and my young age. Man, it'd be traumatized. And, yeah, <laughs> you don't want to traumatize a kid. You're so she's so beautiful though. Like I would bring like this is the girl that. I I want my son to bring home to me and say, Mom, this is her. He should like, have caught me like two years ago. No, right? he shouldn't have because then two years oh, ago, he been 19. Young, no, wait, wait, no. He's still young. Oh, no. That ain't what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, do not try to find this young woman's information. Oh, ain't what I mean. Don't be, don't be extra young sliding in my DMs. That is not. You don't what like I mean. you don't like the young fellas. Oh no, no. See, that's and that's my cousin said. On, She's pause, like you like pause. the young ones. Uh, two of my exes are younger than me. How much younger? Not not that much younger than me, but they younger than me. Mm-hmm. So it, now that I think about it, like, but they, I feel like they act. Older than, older than you. I, I'm such a, a young You're mature? Spirit. No, I'm such a young Uh-oh. spirit. Okay. I'm the same way. That's why I'm young Mo. Motherfucking young Mo is in the building, man. Young Mo. But back to back to the topic at can, guys. I don't know how we ended up down that rabbit hole, but we're back. Skincare. What do you, what do, you do? What do you use for your skin? Because, like, you're freaking, like, beautiful. Like, <laughs> No bullshit, y'all. She's her skin, her complexion, like everything is even. Your tone is even, and like you don't have bad skin, no acne at all. Like you're I, fucking gorgeous. I don't know what. Uh, well, thank you. First, you're welcome. Um, secondly, I I go to an esthetician now. Okay. Um, because uh, actually, more recently, I was having skin issues. It was okay. the first time I was, and <laughs> my doctor was like, "It's hormonal." I was like, "Girl, what?" She's like, your hormones. I was like, what do, what do you mean? What, what about them? Don't we always have them? I was so confused. Right. Up, up until now, I've literally never had issues with my skin. Okay. Ever. Um, but she just said, that's something that happens when you get older. And I was just like, I'm getting old. <laughs> my feelings was hurt. But I go to an esthetician. Um, and like she, she gave me the whatever product she gave me at the time is what I use. Okay, like, okay. But I don't like even like home care. What it, what products are you in your medicine cabinet? What do you use at home? What have you always used? Because I, I get the hormonal I just, shit. Like, I just started using stuff. Like I, my my mama and my daddy's skin is beautiful. Flawless. Like, like oh, seriously, like no, their skin look like yours. Like y'all all got the same Thanks type of crack, skin. Man. Yeah. They, mom, they look good. So it's it's nothing that had concerned me. But um, when I got older, my doctor was just like, "Oh, your hormones," because I she said I was getting stressed, and the whole right side of my face had broke out. But we got that back together. You so. need to have more sex, more sex, and more water. I drink enough water. You just not having enough sex. <laughs> You need to yo, have more sex, I'm, I'm with, telling you. Yo, I had, Are you single? I just, I'm sure some of the fellow fuckers out there want to know oh, God, if you're yo. single. Or, or let me not assume anything. You date guys, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm single. Uh, you single? I just recently, well, not recently. Me and my ex <clears throat> broke up in November. November. So, yeah. Right before the holidays. What happened? What you do? Uh, what he do? You know I did. It's right? not, it, it wasn't you. People automatically assume it's me too. Like, I, I, I apologize. Did nobody assume that about me. You just trying to take me down that rabbit hole with you. <laughs> it, ain't it, usually, it usually is me, no, though. It's just, it's, you know, people, people realize that there are things that they want to go after and mm-hmm. things like ways that you're not compatible and... Um, you just want to try other stuff. So try other it things. It ain't, ain't no no bad space between us or nothing like that. Okay, but, no bad energy, no bad vibes. Like Y'all just that, that constant, that that constant. That's not there. So like you're right. I ain't. I'm just drinking water. Just and drinking my- water. You need to, <laughs> girl. You need a little more than you need some vitamin D. Uh, I need some vitamin D too. I haven't had any vitamin D in a while, but hey, I've gone. I've been celibate for years. Like. 
not recently, but I have gone like over a year oh, where wow. I was like practicing celibacy. And somebody, one of you motherfuckers out there somewhere is like, how much sex have you had where you feel like you need to go celibate? A lot. Do you think, <laughs> do you think that your celibacy uh, session, did it give you what you what you feel like you aimed for? Because people go celibate and it's a reason behind it, to focus their energy on something. Yes, like, I absolutely agree. My last celibacy, what do you want to call it? Moments. I just said, I'm like session. <laughs> yeah, my last celibacy session. When, right before I be stopped being celibate, it had been over a year. And I, like, promise you, I was in the most positive energy space mm -hmm. like I was in the highest energy that I've ever been in in my life like literally skin fucking clear mm -hmm. glowing I'm talking about bitch was glowing from the inside out and it radiated and everybody that I've, I've encountered like when I was in that space people would literally say like I can feel your energy I can tell you're fun to be around shit like that and I was just operating and vibrating in this high my highest level of energy I was meditating I was praying I was doing yoga every day and shit wasn't even great in my life like behind the door behind the the, the closed doors mm -hmm. and shit it wasn't like everything was great I didn't have six figures in my bank account I didn't have this, this, and that, you know, like the shit that people are going to look at and be like, oh, you know, this is what makes me happy. Oh, okay. But I was so fucking happy. And I was in, like, I was, like, I felt it. I felt good. I, when I got up in the morning, I felt great. And just, man. And then, y'all want to know what the fuck happened? <laughs> that old man. Uh <laughs> that old man came into my life. And pretended to be somebody that he wasn't. Uh, he and was made me believe. Time. And he was. We, when we okay. encountered each other, we both were probably in good spaces. And then the toxicity of it all. When sex gets involved <laughs> with me, <laughs> that's when it all goes wrong. So it's you. It's not me. Don't be it's them. This is no. not all chocolate. Look, look, I they, look, they, look, I'm telling you. What, 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 what? Y'all know we don't promote what R. Kelly did. Oh, but wow. uh, How did we get here? R. Kelly and Jay Z song. Uh, one dip in that girl pool that solid took. One sample of the snapper in that ass was <laughs> Issue. How you buying Gucci sandals matching pocketbooks? Blowing up a pager, ringing a phone off the hook. Ball players spent money and rappers, they spent time all the while, both claiming that they never spent the dime. Business guys, she would victimize, having paying, having paying rent on condos in the Miami high rise. They ask her, whose pussies this? She look them right in the eyes and say, this pussy's yours, daddy. Tell them nothing but lies. They didn't want to, what? They didn't believe it, but they wanted to. They needed to. I'm going to quit y'all. <laughs> somebody, somebody looking at their kid watching this like, get off the dog <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> oh, shit. Let me quit bullshitting. Look I got my girl, Shay Monet, in a fucking building. We are live here in the Big Stew Studios, man. Shout out to my man's Big Stew. I'm your host, your favorite, Dr. Bay. I got one last question for my homegirl, maybe two, for Miss Shay Monet. Yeah, um, when you think of people that inspire you that in the media, public figures, who do you think of? What what women are you looking at? Like like dark skinned women. Um, who do you look at and you receive that inspiration from, or you know that person that inspires you and where you looked at her and was like, she looks just like me. I can do that. Ooh. I can be her. I can do what she's doing. I feel like my inspiration straight come from Gen Z. Okay. Um, there's a actress named Ryan Destiny. Mm -hmm. she, she sings. I she love acts. her. I told my son to bring her home. Yes, yeah, she's gorgeous. I love gorgeous, her. Gorgeous skin, beautiful characteristics. At least you know what they present on social media. Right. She's a beautiful person on the inside. Mm -hmm. I absolutely adore her. 
I do. I, I agree. Absolutely adore her. Shout out to Ryan Destiny, man. Yeah. I fucks with her the long way. She she dope. <laughs> and like when like me seeing her be herself, be authentic. Like she shows true love, not to just like, you know, the people she's dating, but like she shows love in so many ways. And I, I appreciate Younger people being like that because they so cold now. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gen Z cold. <laughs> and and to see somebody that still exudes that type of beauty mm -hmm. amongst their personality. I mean, visually, she's very appealing. Like, her voice is beautiful. But, like, I like seeing people like that. Living a yes. life being young. So, I'm I'm definitely inspired by her. Okay. Um, and then this this girl named um, Sincerely Naya on Instagram. I, I just came across her, but she's a beautiful chocolate doll, and she's an influencer. Okay. And I'm influenced by um, by you know the influencer generation because it's just like they go up and they run with it. Yeah. Like they they hustle, yes. and I I didn't I never had to hustle for anything, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that. Like I work hard when I get everything I have. I ain't never had to hustle for nothing. Right. These people are making millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. And they they influence a whole generation. Like yeah. it it takes a lot to like it takes a lot to like you know make a lot, but to influence people, everybody can't do that. Yes. no matter what. They I are. agree. I agree. That's so. Oh. That's so. I fucks with it. All right. Uh, what what was my other question? I I always have to ask this because y'all know I'm a music junkie. Obviously, I can re fucking recite lines from songs from God. years ago i don't know <laughs> music you on a road trip 12 hours who you writing to you get five artists their entire co collection collabs playlists whatever the fuck who you writing to why is that funny are you not a music person i listen to i don't i'm i don't think that i'm a uh, I'm on music as heavy as other people. I love listening to it, but it's just it just gets me through the day. Um, there's an artist from St. Louis. He moved to L.A. His name's Smino. Smino, okay. I can listen to everything that he got. All right. Um, Got to throw Beyonce in there. All right. Got to throw Bay. Like, everything. She didn't help me get through a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'm riding with B. I'm riding. Um, I love Jasmine Sullivan. All right, I'm 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 in the car. We on the road. Yeah, I, I, I might Jasmine I might make Sullivan. it through this road trip with Her you. Her voice is just so killer. It's sultry. It's sultry. She just has that raspy. Yeah, I, I love, love it. That. Yes. Um, two more. Who we got? Smino ooh. B Jazz. Um, let's see. I might be sleep. What else you got? Um, I don't know because I I need to listen to some low key. It, not low key, but like. Tony Braxton, we gonna be we gonna crash. That's, no, you gonna crash. I'm a vibe. Like, you gonna, I you gonna love, vibe. I am such a. I'm listening to everything, and then Sade. Sade, yeah, we. Yeah. I'm be, if I'm driving, we gonna crash that motherfucker. Unless we, unless we only go be. That's the time. Uh, like you gotta be I'm her turn up, you like her her faster tracks. But I mean, I'm gonna sing with you. I'm gonna sing Tony Jazz and B. With you. <laughs> and who else you say? Tony Jazz, B, Smino, Sade. and Sade. Sade, I'm going to blow some trees. I'm going to be riding, blowing trees, looking out the window, taking that, a scenic route. This is literally, <laughs> like, if ain't nobody else in the call with me, that be my mood the whole time. Really? Like, yeah, you you that, on that, some chill. You on low-key chill vibes. That's vibe. how I am, yeah. I, I fucks with it. I, I'm going to get in this car with you, Shay. I'm going to get in this car. But when you turn in that fucking Sade and that Tony, I'm going to sing a couple Tony tracks with you. Sade, I'm going to groove with Listen, you while no. I'm smoking my blood. But Let, I'm going to be asleep the you, rest of the way. You should call me in another in another time frame because, like, my mental right now is That's in a space. That's where you at. Space. All right. Yeah, but if you were to call me, like, back when, <laughs> like, when uh, the the music, when we was doing all the dances to and stuff like that, like, it would have been a little different. Okay, like. and I can respect that. I can respect that, you know. that. But you you going off of the energy space that you're in right here, yes, right I'm now. I'm 30. All right, <laughs> I feel you. I mean, I'm 40, but motherfucking still, I'm not, don't give me no Sade in the car. Sade is for me at home, blowing some trees, drinking some wine, reading a book, or trying to write some shit. You know, but yeah, I, I, I fucks with it. I'm going to get in this car with you, but you're going to have to drive when you turn on this motherfucking Sade and shit, uh, man, because 
I'm we if I'm driving, we gonna fuck around and crash. Cause I'm gonna get in my feelings. I'm a dr- my mind gonna drift off to that young man. Uh, <laughs> have a moment. Yeah, that's why you stuck now. <laughs> That's why you stuck. Uh, that's why I'm stuck now, Jay-Z man. Jay Z wouldn't have you stuck like that. Jay Z, so who look, you been listening to? Who I've been listening to lately? I've been on DMX, rightfully so. Okay. I've, and, and here's the thing: the I'm case. I'm an ex. Like I support DMX, but his music it's it's grimy, it's gritty. Mm-hmm. Like he's like uh, this motherfucker's like you know she started catching feelings that he out just like a thief in the night. Like me, you're gonna rob me. Like, I don't want a guy that might rob me after he fucks me. Like, I don't want you to put it down and then steal some shit out the crib, yo. So, <clears throat> rest in peace, DMX, man. Mad love. My sister's a huge fan. She's taking this very hard. And she ain't one of them fans that's fronting. Like, she's straight, like this motherfucker used to straight rock out to DMX. I fucks with DMX. I have a DMX story. I saw a condom hanging off DMX's dick. I swear to God. He was at staying at the Ritz Carlton, Swiss Beats. I promise you, I had to bring my homegirl Katie on the show. We told this story senior year of high school. No bullshit. I saw DMX's dick with a condom hanging off of it. Rest in peace to DMX and his fucking cock. But um, I'm not like I'm not a huge <laughs> X fan. But I have been listening to DMX. That's where I was going with it. I've been listening to DMX. Uh, Cole, J. Cole, like when I get in that space where I need motivation and encouragement and some uplifting shit, I'm always going to run a Cole. Mm -hmm. Cole motivates me. He inspires me. Uh, when I need to be amped up, bleak, uh, not bleak, uh, Memphis Meek, Meek. Mm. I fuss with Meek. Like, if Meek decided to call me up, reply reply to my DM, because I did DM Memphis, uh, (laughs) Meek Mills, I did DM Meek Mills. That's when he was on Twitter talking about he's looking for a wife, and I was like, "Hey, what's up? What I'm about a, a doctor? I'm a doctor. <laughs> I swear to God, I ain't coming broke. But I'm not. Hey, I'm a doctor, Meek. If you're trying to get at me, get at your girl. I know you just had the baby with Milano. We can work it out. But I fucks with Meek. I fucks with Meek the long way. Call Meek, DMX. Who else I've been listening to? Um, Shit, I don't know. Let me look at let me look at Apple Music and see what the fuck I've been looking up. Let's see what I've been looking up. Uh, I was listening to uh, Gotti. Only listening to you know I got them sex. <laughs> I don't know that so, that song does something to me. Yellow ball, super fine. No, I'm hitting it from the back. I don't know why. Don't that, ask me why I was that listening. That was the last song I listened to. All right, Chat, little ba- and, little baby. Uh, the the baby. I've been fucking with the baby the long way. Okay, that's why ratchet guilty pleasure. Like I be in my room and I twerk to the to the baby. I didn't know how many songs of his I knew. Like I didn't know <laughs> you that. Know all of them. I was like, dang, I listened to him quite a bit. Like, oh, okay. so you like that ratchet shit, man. You like that ratchet shit, man. Yeah. All your fuck. How far I go in life? You got I two like. I like I ratchet shit. Like I gotta, I gotta get it. Like, I don't know. but not too ratchet. Like, like. I want to go to brunch. and What about Big Mulatto? Big Mulatto. I've, I've been listening to her stuff, and I like her. Um, what? These female rappers, let me tell y'all something. Because y'all know I'm like, I'm a music junkie. Oh. I cannot. I'm sorry. I can't get with them. Y'all don't like her? Like... Like I liked her on uh oh. that uh she been quarantined and she's super thick. Like that's my shit. If I'm out, you gotta ask my homeboy Marcus, man. Shout out to my homeboy Marcus, host the Cognac Corner. When that song comes on, I don't give a fuck what's happening. I literally stop doing whatever I'm doing and this slow twerk comes comes out of me <laughs> like she been Rotate. quarantined. Rotate. Like, I've, I've gotten a little thick <laughs> in this uh, whole COVID-19 shit, man. But uh, yeah, man, that, that's it. That's it, man. We, we done talking shit. Hey, to the fuckers out there, anybody out there listening, the whole purpose of this episode was... Don't tell her she's pretty for a dark skinned girl. This is part two of Don't Tell Her She's Pretty for a Dark Skinned Girl of a series of episodes that I'm going to continue to do with uh, different guests that can relate to my experiences in situations where my skin tone is acknowledged before my academic background, my education, my career achievements, and things like that. And I got my homegirl, Shay Monet, in the hey. fucking building. Plug your socials. Tell them where they can follow you at if they want to follow you. Jeremiah, my son, do not follow this young lady. She's 30 <laughs> years old. 
you are 21. Uh, I drive. mean, she's a good, she's a, she's Picking a good, I like her. If you <laughs> decide you want to date an older woman and it's her, I might side at her at some point. I might feel away, but I, I fucks with her. We, we could vibe. Like, you know, hey. Yeah, I can follow me you know. at uh, Dark Skin Shade. So D A R K K S K I. It's kind of um, a contradiction because you're okay with referencing yourself, Dark Skin Shade, on social media. Am I'm I, just fucking with you. No, it's cool because somebody had actually asked me that. They was like, how you feel comfortable? I'm like, am I not dark skin? Like, I mean, I am. That's what y'all calling me when you're I You're embracing it. You, you're you, embracing you're not, it. You're calling me that on the sidelines anyway. Like, when right. people reference me, that's what they say. Black, black shade, dark, dark skin shade, tall chocolate shade. Like, it's always something. So, right. I mean, if you you going to call me that anyway. I so, am dark skin. I'm not offended by that. Right. It's, it's other stuff that come with it. But, right. Um, and, and that's just kind of where I came from. Like, if, if you know I'm on that type of time, if I already call myself dark skin shade, and I'm on that type of time, then you already know what type of time it is when you reach out to me. You already know what I'm on. You already know what I'm telling you that I'm about, what that where where I stand, how I feel about myself, what I'm trying to inspire. Like you shouldn't be confused when you see that, when you hear that. So if I say that before you approach me and you know, hey, can you endorse this or hey, can you influence this? You know where my stance is on colorism. Right. I don't even have to explain it to you. You so don't. You, you, you know, so, like, it's it's not going to be a follow-up of, hey, I seen you said this about this. Like, I'm not going to have PR problems. You know where right. I stand at with it. Yeah. And, and so I wanted people, before they even approached me, to know that. So I don't have to explain myself. I'm not going to enter rooms and have to explain myself no more. Hey, I can dig that shit, man. Maybe that that's what I'll title the episode. <laughs> what did you say? I'm not uh I'm not about to enter rooms and have to explain myself. I'm, well, I'm gonna come up with something clever surrounding it. I'm gonna have to watch this episode <laughs> back before I air it. All right, y'all man. Y'all know y'all can find me on Instagram. So S O O Sophisticated One on Twitter, so mo. I'm also on Instagram as pure underscore fuckery. Monique Ross on Facebook. We are filming in the Big Stew Studios, man. Ooh, Shout out to my man, Big Stew, for hey. all the fucking love and support that he pours into me. Your favorite fucking Dr. Dr. Bay. <laughs> Monique Ross, drop it off in the comments, man. Shout out to the fuckers out there. I appreciate you guys for liking, comment, sharing. Thank you all so much for the love and support that you show me for tuning in. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Pure Fuckery. Uh, that's it. That's all I got, man. I'll catch y'all in the next fucking episode. Peace.